Hi there, my name is Chris and this is The Wiggler. And today I wanna to show you what it is, how it works and, and why I'm making it. So it's an expressive synthesizer, which means it's an electronic music instrument that tries to take inspiration from the expressiveness of acoustic instruments. For example, on a violin, uh, your fingering hand, you can wiggle for a vibrato effect. And your bowing hand, you can uh, press more firmly and move the bow faster to make a note louder. Uh, so the goal of this is to make synthesizers feel more alive. So a quick overview of the instrument. It has two dimensions of expressiveness. That's the left-right wiggle I showed you, and, and the vertical motion. It's a monophonic instrument, which means it plays one note at a time. And I decided to only give you notes belonging to one scale to make it a bit more friendly and compact. So right now you're listening to the major scale. And I can flip it into a harmonic minor. To extend the range a bit, we've got some momentary octave up and down buttons. So this is the octave down, and this is the octave up. So that's the overview. Um, if you stick around for the video, I want to show you how it works, how I made it, and how the synth patch um, is set up. So let's get into how I built it. It's all built around a platform called Daisy Seed. This is a microcontroller that is designed to help people make music instruments. These gray circles here are all capacitive touchpad modules that I bought on Amazon. They're about 80 cents each. The heart of the machine is something called a flexure. So a flexure is a mechanism where you take a rigid piece of material and cut it in a certain way and, and allow it to actually flex in, in a controlled manner. Um, so this flexure has two parallel arms and the parallel arms allow the key bed to move in this left-right motion. So I originally designed this parallelogram flexure in order to enable the wiggle motion. And I discovered kind of accidentally that it was also bending in the vertical direction, which wasn't originally my intent. Um, but then I thought to myself, hey, in, in one mechanism here, I can wiggle and I can press. So um, let's take advantage of that. So the flexure enables the motion, but you also have to measure it. To do that, I wanted to find a sensor that was non-contact to avoid adding any, any friction to the flexure motion. Uh, so I found something called a linear Hall effect sensor. This is a little chip that measures magnetic flux passing through it and outputs that flux as a voltage. Um, so if you take a linear Hall effect sensor and you put a magnet near it in a particular orientation, you can measure the motion of the magnet. So I have two of these pairs. Um, one sensor magnet pair is set up to measure the left-right wiggle motion, and a second pair is set up to measure the vertical motion. Um, so those Hall effect sensors output voltages that get read by the daisy and used to modify the synth patch. So for the physical construction, I 3D printed this big spacious frame with room to put the flexure in and put uh, a couple breadboards. And that, the breadboards allowed me to figure out how the wiring works as I went along. Um, and I just slowly wired up every element one at a time and added it to the code. Eventually, the breadboards were fully populated and I had the core mechanism working, um, but I was missing a control panel to play with. So I 3D printed this big box <laughs> with space for pots and switches, and I put that on top and I literally hot glued it in place. So I actually can't take this apart right now without kind of permanently unplugging everything. Um, and I think in the future, I'm not gonna do this breadboard stuff again because it gets really, really tedious um, to cut every wire to the perfect length, which is why you see this kind of nest of wires out here that I'm scared to trim down. So that covers the the function and the build. And I think now I can get into the how the synth patch is set up. So let me reset the patch here. 
OK, the panel is reset, uh, so we can build the sound together. It starts with some familiar synthesizer setup. So you have an oscillator. And this oscillator can morph from a triangle shape to a sawtooth shape. Then the oscillator goes into a low pass filter, which sculpts the sound. And finally, into an amplifier that um, the amplifier is basically just on whenever I'm touching any of the pads. It has a little bit of attack and release to get rid of the clicks. Um, so that's that's the synth patch, um, but now we got to make it expressive. So the first thing we do is we use the left-right motion to modulate the pitch of the oscillator, like so. So you can, you can see the triangle wave kind of stretching and squishing here, and that that modulation gives you the vibrato effect. Um, and now we want to animate the filter. So um, if you look at the orange knob here, that is the filter cutoff. And the gray knobs are the modulators. And I, I picked gray because they're like a mix of colors, right? So um, down here, you see a label that says press with an arrow pointing at the filter cutoff. So that means that the pressure will open the filter for me. So if I turn up the pressure to filter cutoff modulation, now when I press down, it will open the filter. And so pressing down on this flexor is literally the same thing as turning the knob. Uh, I can show you that they sound the same. So this is the flexor, knob, flexor, knob. There you go. So now we have the wiggle modulation and the, and the pressure modulation to the cutoff. With those two modulations, it starts to feel pretty alive. But the problem we have is that the starts of the notes are not very well defined, and the sound is a little smushy. When someone plays trumpet, at the start of every note, there's a little bit of a to define the start of the note. And I try to bake that in by adding a little pluck animation. Um, so I added a decay envelope to modulate the filter at the start of a new note. And that's called pluck in this case. So this top knob is the pluck to filter modulation. Um, so if I turn that up, now at the start of every note, it will open the filter and slowly close it for me to create a pluck effect. So there, that's a kind of a dramatic pluck. I can do a more subtle pluck. This, this knob here is the pluck length or, or decay time. So I can change the, the duration of the pluck from the fastest possible pluck, which is almost a percussive hit, and I can, I can go slower from there. So here's the slowest pluck. Very slow. So to recap, we have three modulations, and that's all there is to it. There's, there's the wiggle modulation to the pitch. There's the pressure modulation to the cutoff. And then the pluck to add some definition to the start of the note. OK, um, and finally, to tie it all together, there's some artificial reverb. So that is my introduction to The Wiggler. Thank you for sticking around this long. And I actually am on a mission to try and turn this into a product. And I also want to share that journey of learning to make products here on YouTube. I also plan to make videos to share the skills that might enable you to make your own instruments. So if you want to stick around and follow that journey, please subscribe. And if you'd like to support the mission directly, the mission of making expressive synthesizers, um, please consider checking me out on Patreon. In any case, I hope you have a nice day and goodbye. Thank you.